After the recent announcement of NVIDIA's RTX 30 series GPUs, I received a lot of questions about the coolers that the Founders Edition cards will be using. It's a very unique cooling design and looking at the airflow setup, it's likely to perform either really good or really bad depending on which case you put it in. So if you are interested in picking up either the RTX 3070, 3080 or 3090, this video should give you some more insight on whether you might want to consider picking up up the Founders Edition card with the new flow through cooler or consider picking up a conventional open air cooler from a board partner. And of course, without the physical cards actually in hand yet, this won't be a temperature or thermal review. There won't be actual numbers in this video, but this is more so just to take a closer look at explaining the thermal design and airflow setup and taking a look at where this will and probably won't work. So let's start off by breaking down this new cooler design and I'll use the RTX 3080 as a reference. Firstly, the heatsink is significantly larger compared to the RTX 20 series FE cards, extending pretty much all the way to the cards two slot thickness as opposed to leaving some of that volume for the faceplate or shroud. Here's where the thermal design gets interesting though. The first fan operates as intake right near the IO, forcing cool air onto the heatsink which is then channeled directly out of the case near the rear IO, just like a blower card, except here the process seems a lot more efficient. Cool air is taken in and immediately shoved out of the heatsink in a short space. That means there's no time or space for that hot air to recirculate to the rest of your system or back into the card. Then we have the second fan at the opposite end of the card and at the top and since the Founders Edition PCB is a lot smaller and also V-shaped, this second heatsink is completely open at either end allowing air to pass completely all the way through. The exterior metal frame of the Founders Edition cards helps channel this direction of airflow and overall creates a really interesting cooler design. The two fin arrays located at the middle of the cooler are attached directly to four heat pipes, although they don't receive active cooling like the two primary heatsink areas. These instead just serve to increase the total surface area of the entire heatsink a bit more and receive more passive cooling. As the air passing through these fins will be a lot slower in velocity, the fins are spaced out a lot more than the actively cooled portion. So this flow through cooler design is optimized around a mid tower case system where you have cool air coming through the front of the case and exhaust fans placed at the top and rear. The only concern with a mid tower case is when using an air cooler for the CPU, the air going into that cooler is going to be a lot warmer since some of it is going to be coming from the top exhaust fan from the graphics card. AIO based setups with the radiator positioned at the front of the case shouldn't encounter this issue, although you might with a radiator that is rear or top mounted. For the most part, you should be totally fine with a mid tower case that has enough airflow. ITX cases on the other hand are a completely different story, but before we dive into the thermal challenges there, let's just take a look at whether the 3080 and 3090 will even fit into many popular ITX cases. For the RTX 3070 Founders Edition, that will fit in pretty much anything except those ITX cases that are five liters in volume and below. The 3070 FE comes in at 242 millimeters in length and 112 millimeters in height, which makes it roughly 14 millimeters longer than the FE cooler for the RTX 2060 Super. The RTX 3080 maintains that same two slot thickness and 112 millimeters in height. However, the length is now stretched slightly longer than the full length 20 series Founders Edition cards at 285 millimeters. Again, most ITX cases will have no problem with this, such as as the NCase M1, NR200, Ghost S1, and NZXT H1, but smaller cases such as the Silverstone SG13 won't be able to physically accommodate the 3080 FE. The RTX 3090 Founders Edition is a big graphics card though. Three slots, 138 millimeters in height, not including the power connector that needs to exit at the front, and 313 millimeters in length. This will not fit in most ITX cases, and anything 
anything that is only two slots is immediately off the menu, like a Dan A4 or a Ghost S1. A couple of cases that do come to mind that can fit the 3090 Founders Edition are the Cooler Master NR200 and the Sliger SM580. This also applies to most of the RTX 3080 and 3090 board partner cards that are two and a half to three slots. Most of them are tall, long, triple fan designs that require at least 300 mils in length. However, there might be some hope if you are looking to build with that monster RTX 3090 in a relatively compact ITX case, and that's because the water blocks that are coming out on the market are relatively small. EK have released one of their water block designs for the RTX 3080 and 3090, and that looks only around 250 mils in length. This block is for the reference PCB though, which the Founders Edition cards do not use, so we're still waiting to see which cards this block block is compatible with. Despite the water block itself being quite small though, there's still a huge question around how much radiator volume you'll need given the power ratings for the 3090 and 3080 are quite high. Thermal testing and finding a suitable water-cooled configuration is going to be interesting for sure. Now back to the flow-through airflow design as it does pose a problem for some ITX cases. Although the RTX 3080 FE will fit in sandwich layout cases like the Ghost S1 and Den A4, since the backplate sits so close to the spine of the case, that's exactly where the top exhaust fan is going to be blowing. That means more noise due to turbulence, since there's an object closer to the fan blades, and also very limited space and direction for that hot air to escape. Even with a top or bottom exhaust fan, I'm doubtful that you'll be able to overcome this airflow problem. Some of you have noted that in the Dan A4, it is possible to flip the power supply orientation to have the fan facing the graphics card fan instead. I'm just not sure the PSU fan can create enough pressure to make that work. There is one sandwich layout case which I think will be able to work with this 3080 Founders Edition, and that's the 10 liter formed T1. In this case, it's possible to offset the power supply away from the graphics card, allowing for a pocket of air between them that can be exhausted from a fan above it. Now, I have been looking for more compact card and cooler designs from the board partners, such as Asus, EVGA, and MSI. However, it just looks like they're plainly avoiding compact cards for this series. So far, I haven't found any two-slot RTX 3080s yet, apart from the Founders Edition, and I think two-slot RTX 3090s will just be completely out of the question. And that's likely for a good reason, these cards pull quite a bit of juice. Overall, the flow-through cooling design is one of the more interesting ones that we've seen on a graphics card, and for many larger cases, I can see it working quite well. It'll be interesting to see whether it poses a problem for large tower coolers for CPUs, which will consequently be taking some of that hot air in. By the way, a lot of aftermarket cards also use a shorter PCB with no backplate covering the airflow of that last fan, so you'll end up with a similar vertical airflow path as the Founders Edition, kind of heading towards the CPU cooler and the top of the case. Liquid cooling looks like a pretty solid bet though if you're looking to build a powerful 3080 or 3090 rig as compact as possible, and I think a dual radiator setup will be likely required. So those are my thoughts on the new Founders Edition cooling design before we jump into all of the testing, and I would love to know your thoughts down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.